Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Hi. Hi. Renata, how are you? I'm good. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm well. You look stunning today. Thank you. It's Friday right after this. I'm going out, so that's why. Awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm jealous of your plans. What are you up to tonight? No idea. I mean, my friends have plans. I'm just going along with it. That's that's what's up. Hopefully it ends like it did in Flock with a music showdown and some drinks. I hope so, but the company is not as good as that. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's awesome to see you. Thank you for coming to Fedora Women's Day and presenting. Um, I know you have, you know, some experience with Fedora, but you have even more to share about other communities that you're involved with. So I'm super excited to hear your story. I'm going to let you go ahead and jump off. And then when you're wrapping things up, I'll come back on and help moderate any questions. Yeah, okay. Good. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Um, let's see if I can share the screen because I have prepared some slides here about journey in tech. As Marie said, um, it's not this specifically to Fedora and my involvement in Fedora. It's basically how I started in tech and how I branched out to open source and then Fedora and then client. So hopefully I can cover them all and uh, my journey can be useful to anyone who might have a few questions to mind. Um let's see how I can show it to you. Okay. Application. How does that go to I think this one? Oops. My journey test. Can you all see it? I don't want to share it like this. No. So we're, we can hear, we can see the screen. Oh my gosh, I mm -hmm. love this here. This is gorgeous. The audio mm -hmm. is a little bit choppy. Okay. Um, it's actually better right when you did that. Okay. Let me try this one. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's, that's much better. Okay. Yep. Did, if this doesn't work too, I can put my headphones on and see. Okay, I... if it doesn't, I'll jump back on. All right, I'm gonna leave. Okay. <laughs> In the first one, I do presentations of myself. But I'm back again because it's really fuzzy. Okay. okay, so this is my journey in tech. Prepare for some nostalgia here. Uh, this was a very, it, it was very fun, fun to put together for me because um, I have been in tech for quite some time, but I uh, stopped to think how I got here. So this was very fun uh, to put these slides together. So. Yeah, here's also the nostalgia part. Um, okay, so this was uh, the first time I got introduced to tech. Um, this was our first computer. Uh, this is how it looked like because I don't have any pictures. It was a Pentium 4, I think. Um, and it was actually my brother's computer. So I had very restrictive access to it. Um, but when I first saw it, I was immediately drawn to it. I wanted to know how it worked. Uh, what can I do with it? What are the possibilities? And the first thing that my brother taught me, it was um, about Wikipedia. And yeah, and when I learned about the Wikipedia, I was mind blown. I thought, okay, I can search about anything and know anything I want. So I would spend literally hours on Wikipedia and I had a notebook uh, that I would uh, keep near myself. And then whatever I would read and wanted to remember it, I would just write it down. And 
um, this is how my journey in tech started. After this, it was, this is the beginning chapter. After this uh, came, so that was in primary school. I was in the eighth or ninth grade. And then came high school, which is this chapter, the second one. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next, um, but I really thought during my primary school, I thought that I really don't like learning theory. I didn't like just sitting and listening to the teachers and I didn't see any applicable um, lessons there. So I thought that was very boring to me and I wanted some more practical learning. Um, so I found out about a school, a high school, that was electrical engineering high school, uh, supposed to be for guys, but for some reason in my country, they also accept women, although a few, uh, very few. Um, so I decided to go there and see how it looks like. And I went, took a tour, and then saw the labs. And I loved it. I thought, okay, I can explore more computers, which I really liked. There was practical learning because it wasn't just theory. We would actually learn about every piece of the computer, about um, electrical, uh, how the electricity works and stuff like that. I really, really liked it. And I can say I really enjoyed high school, although um, I made a good friends, although we were very, a few women there, like we were four women and 35 um, male Um Oh, you can see me? Oh my God, I'm sorry, I can't look at the chat because I'm looking at the slides. Can you see me now? Mm, I'm not sure. Okay, cool, cool. Sorry, I can't, I can't look at the, both at the same time. I will take a look at the chat later. Okay, cool. Um, so this was high school, um, the second chapter. And then the third chapter, which is university. I finished high school and I was having some thoughts on what I could do next. I knew I wanted to study, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to pick. So there were two main things that I really enjoyed. Uh, which is computer science and psychology. I was always also interested in psychology and enjoyed reading books uh, about psychology. And I was also had this creative side of me that I could never apply to my school, my high school, because it was so focused on engineering. Um, so to pick between this two, I thought maybe I can just, you know, combine creativity with computer science and that works. Uh, psychology is also, I can learn more if I want to, but I don't see myself practicing it. So I went with computer science. Um, this sounds a very easy decision maybe right now, but at the time I had a lot of thinking about this. Um, okay, the next chapter is uh, the chapter of open source. This was uh, the first year of university when I first got introduced to open source. Um, some people on my, uh, where I live, I live by the way in Kosovo and Pristina, which, which is a very uh, small and young country. Um, they were uh, building a hackerspace. Um, and I wanted to see what was going on there. And I have some friends uh, that uh, were involved uh, in open source and were building the hack hackerspace. So I went and saw what it was happening there because I was very curious. Um, and this is what I saw. Basically, I went to the hackerspace. Uh, I was the only girl there and there was a lot of terminals and I just didn't know if I fit in there. I was. I was very curious of what they were doing, but since I was in the first year, so I didn't have any programming experience. Um, so what did I do? Um, I did some exploration. 
So not in front of everyone in the hackerspace, but I got introduced to the world of Linux uh, through those guys. So when I um, came back home, I wanted to explore what open source is about, what Linux is. And I watched YouTube videos and I also um, decided to give a try uh, some Linux distros, um, which are called flavor, flavors or, and to me that sounded like so interesting, like ice cream flavors or something. And so uh, I decided to try some of them. Um, I put some virtual machines on my computer and the first one, fun fact, the first distro I tried was um, Puppy Linux and then um, Linux Mint, I think, uh, Debian, and then I had, um, or OpenSUSE, and then Fedora, which I ended up keeping. Um, yeah, this was that I now knew, which I didn't know before. And I thought, okay, um, I can read that I have the opportunity to contribute and change things and propose about new things. But how do I do that? I have no idea. Um, at that time, I was um, through my friends from um, Albania. Uh, they had uh, Fedora community and still have. And I, they invited me with a link on Telegram. And one day they shared a link for Altrici. Um, I clicked on it randomly and saw what Outreach is about, and it was the perfect thing I was looking for. Uh, because uh, for those of you who don't know, Outreach is just like Google Summer of Code, uh, basically um, approaching new contributors and helping them get involved for the first time contributors. Um, but since they saw that on Google Summer of Code, there were no um, participation from um, underrepresented folks, they decided to do RHE, uh, which is focused only on, on, only on uh, underrepresented folks. And um, another problem that I had on RHE, I went through, I, I thought it was a great idea, and I went through every, um, every project they had uh, listed on their website. But the problem was I didn't know to uh, coding because I was still on my first year, ending my first year, I'm not sure, of university. Um, so I, I found out that RGG also had some non-technical contributions, which is really nice. So I took a look at them and found the perfect one for me. I found GNOME, uh, which was looking for usability testing. I had no idea at the time what usability testing was, and I thought at the beginning, like, why do we even need it? Uh, but f later I found out that we do need it uh, a lot, and there's actually a whole a career that it's built upon the user experience of applications. Uh, so anyways, I looked uh, at what us usability is and how to apply it to software and then I added, uh, ended up doing some contributions for GNOME uh, and I did my internship on Outreach for three months which was a great experience. Um, there I found out about design part of the open source. Um, basically how much uh, open source uh, software needed good design um, and usability and user experience improvements. I got exposed to that. And I also got exposed to other communities like um, open source design, Fedora, Debian. And so I saw um, a lot more uh, variety on open source uh, during this, during my internship and during this chapter. Um, the other chapter, which is the fun one, um, it's this one. Um, this is when I I have finished my internship, and as I said, I saw the need for uh, good design work in open source software, and the need especially for user experience improvements on open source software, uh, so that it would be easy to easier to use, and that way, uh, in my mind, um, more people can use it, right? Um, so my strategy was, okay, let's, um, 
I thought, uh, let's do a workshop or a talk or something like that. So I can reach out to more com communities and explain them that um, improvements of user experience, it doesn't mean to, it doesn't have to be hard or a lot of work. It, I wanted to simplify it for them in a few steps and how they can, uh, everyone actually can contribute uh, to their uh, open source project by doing improving user experience with uh, with a very simple way. And I did that in a few uh, conferences and one of them was uh, also FUP, which I ended up having a great time. And um, what I learned also during this time uh, was the non-tech side of open source. Uh, which was the community part, because uh, even before I had uh, kept in touch with the communities, but um, mainly through um, written format, which is not the same as meeting them in person and seeing them that they are not just a nickname. They have faces, they have personalities, and that was so much fun. And to see all the communities uh, for example, at Flock, like how they were very connected to each other and they knew each other for years sometimes, but still were very welcoming to uh, new people. I felt very nice there. Um, so yeah, I did this for uh, some places. And during the events, I would also do, for example, usability testing to help, uh, as I said, um, open source software uh, projects to improve the user experience. So I would do usability testing on the halls uh, with some participants and then whatever um, they would need to test most, I would do that. For example, um, on Flock, I remember doing um, a usability test for the badges um, website and then I made sure to compile all my findings and give them back to the community so that they can uh, take action on them. Okay, let's see if so far I everyone is hearing me and I'm good. Okay, I think so. Just checking. Okay. Um, next chapter. Uh, the next chapter for me was working on open source. I was approached um, by a small company that does design on open source to work for them and to do basically what I was doing until now. Uh, trying to improve user experience and doing user research, some UX design. And um, I really, since I really enjoyed that, I immediately accepted it. And I had uh, the opportunity during this time to work for a lot of open source projects, um, which feels very good. And uh, to know that I could help to improve them. Um, I have here some examples just so just a few of them so I can show you what uh, what user experience is about or for non-design folks here just to get an idea of what I do. Um, so for example, this one is I have worked with Thunderbird, uh, which if you don't know, is an uh, open source email client. Um, lately, they have been integrating uh, PGP encryption uh, as a built-in uh, feature. Uh, so I've been helping to do the design and the research part of the design, uh, just to make sure that everything um, is, uh, the user experience is smooth. You can see here is the, on the right side is the research part, and then you can see the mockups here and the heat maps that you see uh, in the bottom with the colors. They are from the usability testings um, because I talked to a few users that had used Enigmail before, and compared it to the user experience of uh, Thunderbird uh, with PGP um, integrated. And um, I wanted to see how they are comparing it, how is the user experience, so you can see everything is uh, detailed and also uh, had, had been um, written down by me um, in very details with screenshots and how to improve it and suggestions and all of that. Um, the next one is, for example, I2P, um, which I don't know if, um, so I'm, I'm just here, I don't know how much you all know about the application, so I'm just going to quickly introduce them. I2P is like basically like Tor, 
um, they had a browser extension before, uh, which looked like this, like the before. And then we did user research. I talked to users and to uh, the community there to see what they needed and uh, started building the design, doing low uh, fidelity wireframes. And um, this is how the design ended up looking, which I think it's, um, it's, it's nicer than it used to be. So this was basically a redesign. Um, after this, we got Briar. Briar is an application for, again, open source, um, for, which is based on security. Um, they had have a very, uh, a much complicated approach to connecting with users, connecting with each other than traditional applications, like for example, WhatsApp and and fiber and stuff like that. Um, so we worked with them. I did a few testings uh, to see how it goes. And they are still in the beginning, but we are improving each iteration. Um, yeah, so this is basically my work. I'm always open to seeing and finding out other ways how to help open source software improve its user experience. I'm always open for that. Um, but this is basically my, my journey and um, how it looks. Um, in the last slide, I just wanted for if anyone here is very new to open source or they are not sure why they should do it, um, you you saw my journey and maybe my reasons. So I just wanted to maybe quickly highlight some other reasons. Um, and there is a lot. Uh, I wrote here just a few of them, but now reading it, I, I can imagine uh, other other ones coming from my own. Um, for the first one is getting real world experience. I think that's very important. And uh, open source allows you that if you are in the beginning of your career, for example, it doesn't matter design or whatever, uh, coding, um, you have the opportunity to uh, not do just um, some work based on a um, a homework uh, that you were given in a course, but here you can just apply everything you know and learn everything in real time with real problems, uh, which is very important. I know in the design, but I'm sure uh, for every other uh, area. And the second one is uh, connect with people from uh, of same interests. So um, for me, I live in a, as I said, in a very small country. Um, basically, in my country, there is no one that does U UX research, which is my what I do for a job. Um, so I felt very lonely at times, not having someone to share my ideas and what I'm thinking about um, my profession. And in open source, you have a lot of people working and you have other U UX researchers, in my case, um, that I could talk to and they have communities and I can discuss more about my profession. Um, and I'm sure this applies to everything else. Um, the other reason is working on large scale. What I mean by this is, um, I'm not talking about every software, but mainly in open source, so this uh, software, the project and the software is huge. So you have the opportunity to collaborate with a lot of people. And that's, um, and that's something you cannot learn in practice, if you just if you're just working um, on your country with a smaller group of people, um, here you have the opportunity to connect to a lot a lot of people. Um, also, you have the opportunity to learn how to work remotely. I think this is now more accurate than ever uh, because everything has gone remotely these days. Um, so I think this is even more appreciated about open source now because you can basically everything, uh, almost everything uh, is done um, remotely. So you can learn how to approach the remote working part um, through contributing uh, on open source software. Um, the other thing which um, you can see here, I have mentioned three times community and friends, just because I think it's very important and um, on open source communities, you have 
this sense of belonging to a community. And he, also when they are people that accept you and they are friendly, uh, here I'm talking specifically about Fedora because I remember um, how they accepted me and the, uh, immediately I made a lot of friends just by attending one conference. Um, so when you want to um, join an open source uh, group, uh, just make sure uh, you see how they uh, they are connected and um, if you fit in there. But uh, this is why I would recommend uh, joining Fedora because I'm sure that um, they are and they have uh, done a lot of efforts actually to make the community more diverse um, and also make a lot of friends as i said again fedora emphasizes the friends parts which i like and uh, it's really important you will make a lot of friends and if you are an introverted person or shy or reserved like i know i am um, this is a great way to open up because people will approach you and um, ask about what you do and that way you will learn how to um, talk to people and how to make friends. Um, yeah, this is it. I don't have any more slides. Um, you can find me at Renata Giga on Twitter or on anywhere um, if you want to talk more. Okay. Marie, can you hear me? Awesome. Can you hear me? I can, yeah, can you hear me? Okay, cool. Thank you for that story. Like, I really enjoyed how you took us back to the start and I was having like memories of my <laughs> first computer. Like remember when we had like the family computer, like it was like in the in the middle of the house and we all had to yeah. share it and all that. So funny. Um, so I was just, I was also getting nostalgia in there. Um, yeah, thank you for that story. I love that you're doing, you're not doing coding, right? Is, did I understand? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I'm a similar, person here in the open source world doing design um, for many years and now I do like community work but it's definitely um, I don't know it's interesting but at the same time you have this entire background you know how computers work and you went to an engineering school so I'm just super impressed with your story so cool to, to learn all of that stuff for you so Natasha is asking what can a newbie do in Fedora? A newbie. Um, so first, what I I'm just talking here on my experience. Uh, I mean, I mean, maybe other people can share also their first experiences on Fedora. For me, was I attended um, an event that was organized by the Fedora ambassadors, and they do a great job on explaining what uh, the options are. Because in the beginning, it's very hard to know because Fedora is a very big project. So you can't know everything you can possibly do. And then they will help you and guide you in a way. Um, what, where do you fit in? For example, in my case, I was interested in being more of a people's person or maybe something more creative in design. Um, and that's why I ended up um, joining the diversity and inclusion team and also later the design team. Uh, but this is how you get started. Uh, other ways, if you are not able to approach an event like that, I would suggest um, either virtual events like this, uh, where you can ask specific people more, or maybe even uh, joining on Telegram groups or just visiting Fedora uh, wiki pages. There you have uh, step by step guides on how to join everything. And if you have qu questions, you can just ping specific people and they can help you. I hope that answered my, your question. Yeah, I'm just going to follow up with. Yeah. We will be thrilled to have you. <laughs> uh, basically, yeah. if you, you, you show up in a channel and say, hey, I'm new here, there will be like five people who say, oh my gosh, hi, welcome. <laughs> What can we do for you? <laughs> um, so it's definitely a very welcoming place. I would say, yeah, connecting with humans, right? That's the way to to get into open source in a more meaningful way, more like more connected to like your your personhood. 
Yeah. So any other questions? I'm just going to give a chance to do the chat. I don't know if you were in the opening or the intro remarks, but we are working on making a cool video based off the content that we're, we're recording here. So I have a script, if you're comfortable reading it, in yeah. your, so part of it is in your native language and part of it will be in English. So if you could stop sharing your screen, I will copy and paste. I just want to say, uh, oh, go ahead. If, uh, if you had any other Albanian speakers here, you've probably got the Albanian part. So if you don't want to double that, um, because I think I we just had, it. I think we just had someone do Greek. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's not about doubling. It's about having you part of the video. Oh, okay. So okay. we will have you part of the video. Cool. Give me cool. one okay. sec. Cool. Let me copy and text, uh, copy and paste. Should I stop sharing the screen? Okay. So Nick put it into the chat. So okay. I'll do mine just so example. So in your native okay. language, you'll say, hi, my name is Renata. I um, am from Kosovo. Um, yeah. I am a woman and I speak Albanian in Albanian. And then you'll say, we are from different countries, blah, 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 in English. Sound good? Okay, so the second part is in English. Okay, let me highlight the second part so I don't mix it up. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can, can I, can I start it right now? Oh. Okay, cool. Um, përshëndetje, unë jam Renata, jam pri Kosovës edhe flasë shqip. Um, we are from different countries, we speak different languages, we are different cultures, but Dora unites us with open source. Awesome. Bye -bye. You did great. <laughs> Very cool. Um, oh, we have another question. Have you done yeah. UX for Fedora? Um, so to explain my this is uh, to explain my role, my job, it's UX research, which means I don't actually do the high fidelity design, the detailed work. I do the research part, which is doing the testings to see if something is easy to use, and then report those findings and maybe do even a little mockups on low fidelity. Um, so to answer your question, uh, I did UX research, as I said before, uh, for Fedora badges uh, during FLUC 2019, where I did usability testing with a few people from Fedora. And I did a report, which I think Marie shared here. Um, that is basically the UX part of me uh, doing for Fedora. So a really cool update for the people who are here. Um, we actually opened by Masha. Uh, we actually opened um, a bunch of tickets for yeah. some new outreachy applicants to try to tackle some of these badges things, right? So some of these usability issues. Meanwhile, we had an outreach intern over the summer working on the back end of it to move it to Badger away from Tarir. So hopefully it's kind of like all gonna come together <laughs> but yeah. as we all kind of know like these kinds of projects they take time and they take you know passion and people really exactly. put some time in there so um, yeah. we hope to see all the fruits of this labor eventually um, but yeah. the report is so like detailed and you can tell it's it's just great I mean there's a lot there to make the badges site so much better so Yes, um, thank you for the update. I already saw um, some uh, work that someone did, uh, I think from Outreach uh, mm -hmm. for the design. I didn't have time to check everything in details yet, which I plan to do. Um, I would like to keep up with my report and everything that goes through the badges and see how it, how it goes. Yeah, how it goes. yeah, that's like, it's like you're planting the seed yeah. to watch the tree grow. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I hope you have an awesome night out. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much you. for coming to Fedora Women's Day and chatting with us. Thank um, you. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining and for uh, leaving questions and comments here. Uh, thank you so much. Can't wait Bye. to see you in person. Right. Bye. <laughs> yeah.